Welcome to the first video for Chapter 5, which is Day 0, Factoring Review. So today's video, you can probably guess, we're going to review factoring. This is factoring that you learned in Algebra 1 and in Geometry, so none of this should be new. There's three main types of factoring that we're going to go over today. We are going to start with GCF, or Greatest Common Factor. So looking at the first example, 16xy squared minus 4xy. So looking first at the numbers, what's the greatest common factor of 16 and 4? Well, I can divide both by 4. So I bring a 4 out. Then, looking at the variables, both have 1x, both terms, so I can take 1x out. First term has y squared, but the second term only has y. You can only take out the minimum number, the smallest number. So all I can take out is a y. Now I need to see what's left. 16 divided by 4 will leave me with 4. x, I took out an x, so there's no more x's. y squared, I took out 1y, so I'm left with a y. Minus 4xy, well I factored out a 4xy, so I keep a 1 in its place. So this is your answer. You have to remember that 1 as a placeholder. Now, it's always a good idea to check your answer. To check this, you just multiply back out. So, if I distribute, 4xy times 4y would be 16xy squared minus 4xy times 1 is just 4xy, which is what we started with. Moving on to a more difficult example. The next example has three terms. So, looking at the numbers, I need to look at 32, 8, and 16. What are those all divisible by? Well, they're all divisible by 8, so I'm going to factor out an 8. Next, the first two terms have an x, but the third term does not. Therefore, I cannot factor out any x's. So then I'm left with y's. First term has y to the sixth, then I have a y, and I have another y. The lowest term is y to the first power, so that's all I can factor out. Now, what's left? Well, 32 when I divide it by 8 is 4. I didn't take any of those x's out, so x to the 4th remains. I had y to the 6th. I factor out 1y, so I'm left with y to the 5th. 8, take out an 8, is gone. x to the 3rd stays. y, if I factor out a y, is just nothing, just 1. So it's only x to the 3rd. For the last term, 16y, if I take out an 8y, I'm left with 2. So this is your final answer. Again, if you multiply back out, you should be left with your original. So let's do that. We get 32x to the 4th, y to the 6th, plus 8x to the 3rd, y, plus 16y, which is exactly what we started with. Okay. Now, last example is yours to do right here. Pause the video, take 30 seconds, and try this one on your own. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Looking at the numbers, 40 and 8 have an 8 in common. Then I have x to the third, and I have 1x. 1x is smaller, so that gets factored out. I have an m and an m to the third. M is smaller, so that gets factored out. The first term has an N, but the second one doesn't, so I can't factor out an N. So now let's see what's left in parentheses. For my first term, I have 5x squared N remaining. For my second term, I have M squared remaining. Hopefully this was the answer that you got. If not, please make sure you find where your mistake was. Again, it's always a good idea to distribute that 8xm just to check your answer. That was the first factoring type. That was GCF, greatest common factor. You're always going to start with GCF. So anytime you have a factoring problem, you always want to look, are there any terms that I have in common or any factors I have in common in all the terms? If you factor out the GCF first in every problem, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Beyond GCF, we have difference of squares, so that's the next factoring type that we're going to do. Difference of squares means that you're subtracting, so that's the difference part, and you're subtracting perfect squares. So, looking at my first option, or my first problem, 
9x squared minus 25. I definitely have the difference part. I have the subtraction. Do I have the perfect square part? Well, yes. 9x squared is 3x squared, and 25 is 5 squared. So 3x squared gives me 9x squared. 5 gives me 25. So now, this is going to factor into two sets of parentheses. The first one will be, well, both are going to have 3x and 5. One is going to be addition, and one is going to be subtraction. So I should get 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 5. Now, it's always a good idea to check that answer, so we're going to do that. This is how I check my answer. I make a box so that I can multiply 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 5. A lot of you learned to FOIL last year. If you learned to FOIL, that's fine, but I'm going to show you the box. Here goes 3x times 3x, which would give me 9x squared. Here is 3x and negative 5, which is negative 15x. Here is 5 times 3x, which is 15x. And then that last box is 5 and negative 5, which is negative 25. If we combine like terms, our 15x's cancel out, and we have 9x squared minus 25, which is what we started with. Okay, the next two are for you to do. Pause the video right now and try the next two on your own, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. For this second example, we definitely have the difference part because I'm subtracting. Now, what are my perfect squares? Well, the first term is 5x squared. The second term is 8y squared. So then my parentheses become 5x minus 8y, and then the second one is going to be the addition, 5x plus 8y. Okay. And then the next one. This is still a difference of squares, although it doesn't look like it. 16x to the fourth is 4x squared squared. So 4 squared gives us the 16. x squared squared give us, gives us x to the fourth. And then 1 squared is just 1. So this becomes 4x squared minus 1 and 4x squared plus 1. Hopefully you got that far. Then the tricky part is that this first factor still factors. So that first set of parentheses still factors. 4x squared is 2x squared minus 1 squared. So that first set of parentheses becomes 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1. This last set of parentheses does not factor. Although it does have perfect squares, it has the sum of perfect squares, adding perfect squares, not subtracting. Anytime you have a sum of perfect squares, you cannot factor any further. That's called prime. So this is the answer that you should have ended up with. If you didn't, that's fine. I didn't really expect you to, but I did want you to see this. Okay, so those are the first two types of factoring. The last one is called product sum. So before we do the last one, here's your quick trivia for the video. How many counties does Illinois have? So we live in Cook County. How many counties in total does Illinois have? After we go through the next three examples, I'll reveal the answer. Okay, so product sum is always going to have three terms. You are looking for the two numbers whose product is the last term and whose sum is the middle term. So in this case, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 72. That's a multiply, not an x, so maybe I should change that. Two numbers that multiply to negative 72, but that add to positive 1. So I'm looking at the positive 1 in front of the x. Well, the numbers that multiply to 72 are 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 12, 4 and 18, 5 doesn't go in, uh, 6, 6 and 12, so this actually should have been 3 and 24, 
Um, seven doesn't go in, eight and nine. So these all multiply to 72. You will notice eight times nine looks like a good candidate. Negative eight times nine will give us 72, and eight times negative nine will give us 72. Now remember that my two numbers need to add to be one. So negative eight and positive nine is our answer. So you're gonna have x minus eight and x plus nine. Now, we're not gonna check our answer yet. We'll check our answer in the next one since we ran out of room. So this one, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 18, that last number, but that add to negative 17, the middle number. Now, factors of 18 are going to be 18 and 1, um, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, 4 doesn't go in, 5 doesn't go in, and then I'm back to 6. So, a good candidate you're going to notice is 18 and 1. If I have negative 18 and positive 1, that multiplies to negative 18 and it adds to negative 17. So this will factor to be x minus 18, x plus 1. Now it's always a good idea to check that answer. So again, if you don't like to check this way, that's fine. Instead of foiling, I use the box. So I have x minus 18 and x plus 1. x times x will give me x squared. x times negative 18 will give me negative 18x. x times 1 will give me 1x and then negative 18. Now when I combine like terms, this becomes x squared minus 17x minus 18, which is what I started with. Okay, this last problem, this stop problem, is your problem to do. Your teacher will reveal the answer to you tomorrow in class. Just make sure to remind her. Now, returning, how many counties does Illinois have? Well, here, it, here is a map of the counties of Illinois. Thank you to Wikipedia. Illinois has 102 counties. So, good job if you got that right or if you got close. If not, that's okay. Please make sure you remind your teacher in class tomorrow to go over that last example, and please make sure you ask any questions that you may have.